podcast. That was the nod? Wait, that was a nod and a point. You said you're going to point, then you said you can't point because you can't, you don't have a free hand. You said you're going to nod, you showed me an example of the nod, and then you ended up nodding and pointing. Fight me. Fuck! What's up, Viking Mike? Not much. Viking Mike is in the house! What's cracking, buddy? Isn't it weird that I had no idea of you up until three days ago, maybe? And here you are. Yeah. The magic of Instagram. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Really the magic of Stan the Man. <laughs> we have th- uh, Shout Stan out to the Stan. for everything. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. Stan's last name? I'm blank. Uh, good question. I don't know neither. Wait, I've I been know friends it. with him for years. Fuck no. Really? You don't know? Wait, <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, wait. I know this it. This goes by Hold Stan on. the Man. I'm looking it up. Wait. Stan, Stan the Man. He's been he's been texting me. He's, so, yeah. he's just king. King. That's it. You knew. Easy enough. You I knew. Did. It was there. You sandbagged it, me. It, you it knew. It was there. Yeah. <laughs> So what's up, man? Not much. Just uh, just hanging out, doing a little training today. And so what does that consist of for you? Consist of uh, waking up 5.30 in the morning. Okay. Big. If you ever need a wake-up call, let me know, because I go to bed around 5.15. 5.15. Yeah. Okay. So I can always call yeah. you if, if you need to be Perfect timing. Yep. Perfect timing. All right. Yeah. Uh, bagel, a little uh, butter, strawberries, and then uh, go for a short run, three-mile run, and then uh, back to the gym probably around 10 a.m., and then uh, a few hours after that, go ride. And when you run, that's out, and you're not a treadmill guy. No, no chance. No, treadmills, uh, it's it's fake. It's fake running. Because essentially, <laughs> you're on this machine, you lift your leg up, the belt runs underneath you. You're not doing anything. It's not really know? running? Yeah. Anybody can run 8, 10 miles on a treadmill. Now run 3 miles out in the real world. Dude, it's a different story. It's so funny you just said that. So I rarely do cardio in the gym. But when I do, I will jog very slowly on the treadmill while I'm watching like sports highlights or listening to Rogan or something. Right. And uh, I'll run for like maybe 10 to 12 minutes, which I know is nothing. But it's it's just to like, because I'm like, okay, I'm bored. I could go longer, yeah. right? But yeah. I'm like over it, right? Yeah, in a sense. The other day, I was really tired. And my girlfriend and I were going to work out like at 1030 at night. And I'm already exhausted. Like I, I know if I don't do it in the morning, I'm screwed. Because right. by the end of the day, I'm just over Spent. it. Yeah. And... uh I was literally falling asleep in the car on the way over there. She's driving. And she says, do you want to just nap in the car and I'll go in and work out? And it made me so mad. Right. Like, like not really, but I was like, fuck this, you know? So do you know who David Goggins is? Yeah. Of course yeah. you do, because you're a awesome. savage yourself, of course. David's a man. Yeah. So I he had, Joe Rogan had just posted that video, like, maybe a week before about David ran this 240-mile uh, race, which is crazy. They call it a race at 240 miles right. or something. And uh, David ended up having like heart palpitations or something, went to the hospital, got treated or whatever, came back and finished the race Yeah, yeah. like a lunatic. Another guy doesn't know the meaning of quit. Doesn't know the meaning of quit. Nope. So I'm literally, my girlfriend's like, do you want to take a nap in the car? And it just boiled my blood and I wanted to channel my inner David Goggins, which I don't have I one. I know where this is going. Do you? Yeah. I do. So I'm like, we're literally two blocks. We had just come off the free, so we, you know, we go work out at EOS. We yeah. were talking before. Yeah. So EOS on Eastern, right? right? So we just got off the 215 at Eastern. We're at that light. And so it's literally like... It's literally a block and a half yeah. to, to EOS. So I, I go, I have an idea for a video. She's like, what? We're, we're sitting in the red light. And I pop it open. And I go, I'm really tired, you know, but I, 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 I was thinking, what would David Goggins do? Right. And I was like, you know what he would do? He would work out. And my girlfriend's like, yeah, he would work out. And I'm like, not only would he work out, he'd fucking run the rest of the way. And I un- unbuckled my seatbelt, <laughs> nice. jumped out of the car, and I ran a block. Right. Fucking winded, <laughs> coughing, <laughs> because it's the ground is not moving with you, exactly, Mike. Exactly, exactly. It's exactly what I was saying. But in the defense <laughs> of a treadmill, the only time it really serves a purpose is when you're walking uphill with a weight vest on. Okay. You know, I've yeah. done it. It'll gas you. Do consistent three miles. You know, nothing too heavy. Right. Uh, it's a killer workout. Key is, is not to hold on to any of the grab bars. You see people holding on to grab bars. I, You're cheating. Fuck. You're cheating again. I hold on. No, you can't hold on. I hold on, though, because I'm afraid <laughs> yeah. to fall, yeah. Mike. I no. don't want to, the embarrassment, you no. know? No, no. You no got to get that coordination going. Fuck. You got to get the coordination going. Hone in on it, and you'll yeah. crush it. 
All right. Yeah, yeah I was winded, like fucking heaving. Right. <laughs> like Different wheezing. story. Yeah. Different story. That was brutal. Yeah. In my defense, I was talking on camera the whole time. Okay. No, uh, no points? No. Damn. I'm not, and I'm not buying it. You got nothing for me nothing. there? Oh, Sorry, no man. sympathy here. Okay, no. so you you go for what you call a short run, which to me sounds like a half marathon at three okay. miles. Yeah. Uh, then you, you come home, you rest, you work a little. Yep. Then you hit the weights. Yep, and then it's all functional training, uh, kettlebells, sandbags, uh, pull-ups, push-ups, um, all functional core training stuff. I don't hit any machines. I don't bench. Really? People, Man, Mike, what do you bench press? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. For, you know, I, I just don't bench press. So it's all functional core training uh, stuff. Every now and then hit a hot yoga. I enjoy those. Can I tell you my Sunday workout? Yeah, let's My hear. Sunday workout is 100 push-ups, okay. 100 dips, 100 sit-ups, and 100 pull-ups. Did I say pull-ups already? No. Pull-ups, pull-ups pull dips, push-ups, and sit-ups. Nice. 100 apiece. Every Sunday, consistent. Every Sunday, yeah. Nice. Good? Yeah. Points? Pretty happy with All that. All right, yeah. 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 Crippled two days after, but okay. yeah. That's recovery time anyway. Right. So. And the pull-ups take me forever. Because I, I yeah. do like I do like a set of ten and then another set of ten and then seven and then five and it gets to the point where it's like two. <laughs> as long as you're consistent right. and your breaks aren't you know eight minutes in between, you're right. doing all right. Okay, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's something to be proud of for yeah. sure. Forty nine. Yeah, I'm hanging right. in there. There you go. There you go. Uh, all right, and then what is it that you do exactly? As far as a day to day, yeah. Or, I mean, day to day, I mean, I kind of manage a company in uh, Virginia. We do a lot of environmental hazmat work. Okay. So that takes up some computer time, a few hours out of the day. The rest of the time, I'm pretty much in the gym or riding my dirt bike out in the desert. And then you com- you're competing when you're on the dirt bike. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of training, a lot of miles uh, just practicing and then racing down in Baja. Um, you have to pre run each course and then race each course. And each uh, race is somewhere between 350 miles and 1,200 miles. All depends, you know, what they set up. But, uh, you know, pre run takes a couple of days to do it. And then race day, you know, X amount of hours, depends which race we're in. Uh, it's funny. Stan sends me a text. Let me pull this up real quick. Stan sends me a text. He's trying to give me like as much background. Why am I, why am I even doing this? If I know I have to pull the glasses out, why did I do that? God <laughs> damn. It's damn, exactly Travis what you didn't want to do. Didn't want to do this. <laughs> These fucking glasses, whatever. So he says, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. It'll be worth it. I promise. Maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Who knows? He says, he says, I've ridden with these guys. So he's talking about you and Steve Sanders. Okay. Uh, he says, I've ridden with these guys a few times. Normally I see them at the truck and then back at the truck because they're so far out in front. <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate. Uh, Stan's always calling me, hey, Mike, let's go riding Sunday. Let's go riding Tuesday. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm going to kind of do my own thing because when I usually go riding, nobody else ever wants to ride with me because once I start, I'm pretty much gone. And I don't stop. They're usually stopping for granolas, snacks, you know, shooting shit, talking, you know, uh, stuff. So I'm just, just like, no, let's go. We got to go. We got to go. We, we've only been riding for two hours. We need to move. Let's go. And you're like in the middle of the desert. How do you know where you're at? Is this like on a trail now that everyone kind of knows or there you are, just wing it? Yeah, there's some trails. I like to wing it. I go um, down towards Baker area. It's wide open. No Jeeps, no ATVs. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It's safe for me. I can go 100 miles an hour. I don't have to worry about somebody else coming the opposite direction. Literally 100? Yeah, literally 100. So, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Helmet and all that. Oh, yeah. Full okay. gear, neck brace, knee guards, everything. Really? Yeah. And have you, uh, what's the term, laid it down before? Have uh, you laid the bike down? Or no. Do we not talk it, about that? We don't like to talk about okay. it. Slow speeds would be a lay down, but at those speeds, you're pretty much. It's a, a crash. It's a cartwheel. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Got it. So yeah, no it's incidents. Bad. Yeah, several incidents. I'm pretty uh, busted up. Really? But, uh, yeah. Glued back together, bolted back together. Yeah. And that's just uh, just going too fast and not knowing, like, yeah, the trail is it's new territory exactly. kind of Exactly. Something sneaks out, and you don't hit something right. Rock pops out of the sand, and that's it. And you're going uh, you're going sailing. While you're going 100, you've done this? <laughs> no, not quite as fast. Right around 68, 70. Which I've feels like 100. Yeah, it pretty much does. I mean, everything's going by you at light speeds. So uh, you're... I bounce pretty well, though, <laughs> believe it or not. And I think that's helped. So yeah. And you're, like, flying through the air when you yeah. cr- right? This and is ugly you're, and you're brutal. You're seeing the stars and then you're seeing the dirt and then the cactus and yeah it's pretty nasty Fuck. yeah 
Yeah. And you don't care. No, don't care. I mean, your shirt says it all. Do cool shit. That's, That's it, cool man. shit. That's it. That's it. I uh, I just filmed uh, two years ago. We did a film for uh, Monster Energy. Uh, Cameron Seal puts on Rip to Cabo. So we start in Tecate, Mexico, right all the way down to the tip of Cabo. So it's 14, 1,500 miles off-road the whole way. Uh, day two, start of the rock trail. There's 40-some riders. The slow guy went up front for some reason. He pulls off the trail to let me and my buddy by. My buddy goes by. He comes back on the trail before he even turned around and looked. I'm already on the gas. Hit him. I went sailing. My other friend, Chris, said, Mike, I've never seen a body fly through the air like that. Landed on my shoulder. Did a full muscle uh, separation from my scapula. Got MRIs. Got uh, x-rays. And the, the surgeon's like, Mike, you did full. It's It's destroyed. But I decided to not quit. Ride all the way to Cabo the remaining... 1200 <laughs> miles each night guys were uh, taking my gear miles, off this is hours oh yeah days this is nine days, days of riding yeah with a, a torn rotator cuff and ripped shoulder and uh, i was having to take my left arm to put it on my handlebar in order to ride the next day my buddies were putting my gear on me each morning and then taking my gear off each night so i can ride but i wasn't gonna quit you know i knew it was bum and i knew it was ripped it was kind of dangling i'd pick it up set it back on the handlebars in order to keep going but animal yeah you know Pain pills while you're out there? No, nothing. No. Took a couple Advils, but other than that, I was just like, I'll just push through it. You've got adrenaline on your side, though, at yeah, least, right? Yeah. And so then when you yeah. get home... or when It's you, bad each it's night. It's bad, right? Yeah, each night. And then you wake up, and it's still bad. And you drink a little bit of coffee, get something to eat, and you just be like, you know what? We just got to keep pushing forward. So you gotta How many surgeries have you had? Um, Not that many. I've had a few broken bones, uh, a lot of tears. Um, uh, Yeah, a lot of physical therapy. And how did you get into this? But I've had more stitches, I think, than broken bones. I've had over probably 800-some stitches and staples in me. Yeah. Holy Knees, shit. Knees, arms, head. <laughs> yeah. Have you? Has it ever been so bad, like, where you look at yourself, like, right after, and you're like, oh, fuck, I really fucked myself up yeah, this time. Yeah, like, sometimes. Yeah. Ever nervous? Like, oh, this one might, this could be it? Not yet. <laughs> no? Not yet. Not yet. No. When it gets that point, though, I'm usually like, does anybody have any duct tape? we got to seal this up so we can keep going. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, yeah, we've done that before. Just tape it shut. Yeah, just tape it shut. Kind of stop the bleeding a little bit so we can get to town and then get it properly cleaned. Like, if but, you ever uh, saw me when I stub my toe, I think you'd be f- just furious with me. Like, yeah. Yeah, you'd have yeah. no respect. No, for, none. None, none whatsoever. None. Uh-uh. Can't ah, relate. Can't relate. Man. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> the pain is is part of the fun for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's essentially what makes me feel alive when you're going so close to the edge. That's when you really, or I do anyway, start to really feel alive. When you're doing things that the average person can't do, you know you're on the edge of death or, you know, catastrophic failure, you know, whether it's you or your bike or your mind or your body, whatever, that's when I really feel alive. And a lot of people can relate to that, doing what we do. And how did you just get into this? You you just... Like, why dirt bike? Why? Um, I don't know. I mean, my mom bought me a moped when I was uh, eight years old, and it was an old Thomas two-stroke pedal fire-up go moped uh-huh. back in the 80s. I and remember I really those. T- yeah, I remember those blowing blue smoke everywhere. So I kind of started off on that, and she's like, well, if you ride this and you like it, then I'll buy you a proper dirt bike. So then she brought me a dirt bike, and then I started racing motocross on the East Coast. I moved out here and then just uh, quit racing and riding for a while, started this company out in Virginia, and then... Uh, Started uh, riding and racing back in the desert out here, and then uh, yeah, just been uh, racing Dubai, Qatar, Africa. Really? Yeah, all over the world. And what's like a uh, first prize money look like for? Is, is that how it works? Yeah, no, nah, it... yeah, you get money, but you... most of it's from sponsors. Yeah, you get a lot of free stuff from sponsors, whether it be bikes, gear, helmets, all that stuff. Some entries paid. Uh, I'm sponsored by Pirelli Tires, which is a huge deal. They uh, constantly send in tires to my shop. And thanks for Pirelli. Uh, Would they hook you up with car tires too? Or not no? yet. Not yet. But once I get into trophy trucks or something, I'm hoping they have a nice, solid, uh, you know, truck tire that Got hopefully it. they'll send my way. Um, but uh, yeah. So is this the kind of thing that it's still? I know that it's, it's been around for a while, but is it the kind of thing where, like, on the money side of it, like UFC, for example, like MMA, you know, they make great money compared to a normal job, but if you compare them to baseball, football, basketball. Only a handful, like the Conor McGregor's, the Ronda Rousey's, or Brock Lesnar, are making the crazy money. Is it the same? 
in, for what uh, you're doing? It's probably actually less than that. I mean, it's more about bragging rights, getting your name in history books. You're doing it for the passion of it. Yes, we're getting checks if you're uh, in a podium, first through third. Yep. You're getting checks. You're getting free stuff, a lot of notoriety. But uh, it doesn't pay the bills. Most of the time, you're spending more than what you're making. Uh, especially once you get into the you know the bigger teams with the trucks and stuff, but uh, I got a pretty sweet uh, ride with Husqvarna motorcycles, uh, Pirelli, and a bunch of other guys. So uh, I'm I'm really fortunate. That's know. cool. Yeah. And now uh, in your when you're a civilian, let's say, uh, are you <laughs> riding around a motorcycle in town like a? Or no, no, too dangerous. You used to too ride dangerous. in town. <laughs> That's <laughs> where you draw the line. Yeah, hundred yeah. miles to the fucking desert, no problem. But you know, yeah. trop an eastern on a motorcycle, right? Hell no. Yeah, well, and I, I can actually honestly <laughs> say, I think when I stopped. Riding street, riding to the gym by our house and everywhere else, riding to Starbucks or whatever. That's when texting really hit the streets. That's when right. phones became text enabled. Before, yeah. uh, I don't know, 2009, 2008, yeah. it didn't exist. Well, now yeah. you look down when you're on a bike, you see everything around you. <laughs> you know, now you look over at the car alongside you and everybody's looking it's so down. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. So that's why I just pretty much quit. You yeah. Know, even riding our local Starbucks. I tell all my friends, like, you got to be out of your mind to ride a motorcycle yeah. on the streets it's, because no one's looking at the road. Nope. No one. No including one. me. Yeah. Not doing it. Yeah, yeah. Driving with their knee. Yeah. You know, I got their knee. <laughs> trying to pull this off. Yeah, right. it's, it's insane. You know it's time to like get back in your lane when you hear boom, 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 boom. <laughs> exactly. right? You start to drift. Yeah, those road yeah. dots, yeah. That means dead motorcycle rider. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. no good. Not doing it. Right. Yeah. And are you a speed demon, though, behind the car, like in the, behind the wheel of the car? I, I, I got some road rage, I'm not going to lie. Really? Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, luckily my truck's a little bit taller than most cars, so people usually kind of tend to, you right. know, get over a little bit more versus my other vehicle. People are just like, oh, let's cut them off. Who gives right. a shit? Right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I try and reel it in because I, you know, I want to keep a driver's license. So, yeah, yeah. And then, what's your other stuff that you do that's on Action Junkies Highway? Like, uh, oh are man, you a skydiver. Yeah, or you do um, all that shit. Yeah, skydive. All the crazy shit. Yep, skydiving ocean tide with some buddies of mine, Ian. Um, last time I just went in January, not to, yeah, it was January, February, and I was like, Ian, I'm jumping in my underwear, and he's like. Seriously? I was like, yeah, is it cool? He's like, yeah. All right, the owner's not here. Let's do it. He called my name up. I was like, all right, showtime, boys. Stripped down in my underwear. And everybody's like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Who's this homeless guy stripping right, down right. his underwear? It's Viking so, Mike. Yeah, so I just went for it. It's wow. Funny. Yeah. And uh, football growing up, football, baseball, any, no, uh, no sports? No sports, man. Really? Just kind of a loner, me and my dirt bike and my buddies, kind of out in the woods, out in the motocross track and doing our thing and just kind of just always stuck with it. Yeah. Hunter? Are you a hunter? No. no? Shoot some guns, target practice. Okay. Not much of a hunter. No. Do you bring a gun when you're out on the bike? No. No worries you don't worry at all. About anything. I don't worry about anything. Do you anything. see animals out there? there yeah. What's out there? A lot of, lot, I see a lot of uh, tortoise. Um, really? Yep. Yeah. And uh, a lot of burros, of course, donkeys, wild horses. And then the weirdest thing, it was last winter, uh, Mountain Baker, cruising around. I, I, I didn't have my GoPro or my phone. Um, right outside of town of Baker, and I'm cruising. And I come up to this car right off the side of the road, and it's the middle of February. And I, I'm assuming they're strippers, two girls out of the car in a bikini with champagne, taking their picture up against some cactus. And I'm like, man, this would be a perfect opportunity to get a shot and said, usually I see donkeys right. out in the desert, but now two strippers. How weird is this? That's crazy. Yeah, it's, you know, freezing cold out. And I'm like, what are they doing? Right. You know? And do you you don't go out like when it's if it's raining like I know it rarely rains but if it does sometimes in the summer it just rains out of yeah, nowhere like just you comes get out caught midair. sometimes yeah or? get caught in storms doesn't matter it doesn't phase me no because you, you don't know what, wherever you're gonna race what's it gonna deal you what's it gonna throw your way um, I was in Africa three years ago and beautiful sunny day. And it's, I swear, it's just like some out of Indiana Jones movie. You just see this black horizon. I'm like, what's that? Whatever. Still racing. It's getting closer and closer. And it's just this giant sandstorm rolling towards you. And once it gets to you, you just stop, hunker down, and you can barely see your hand in front of your face. And wow. then once it clears, get back on a bike and keep racing. When you ride in Africa, are you riding your bike? Like, are you sh you ship it to Africa somehow? Or um, I'm on a team called Desert Road Ra Desert Rose Racing. They're out of London, and they have a fleet of bikes. I have a, my own bike over there. My own gear is there. I fly into wherever the race is at. They bring the trucks with the mechanics, full setup, uh, everything. And there's usually about six or seven other guys. Wow. Um, and then they wrench for us. We just show up and then race. And yep, they take. Are the bike these back. races televised? 
Yeah, uh, actually, Baja, the Score International Baja Series is on ABC Sports this year. Okay. So it used to be on um, NBC Sports, but this year they just got the deal with ABC Sports. And when is that? Uh, they'll probably show the Baja 1000 races in mid-November. That'll probably air maybe late December, January. Once You'll they be do in the it editing. This, yeah. this November? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we go down next, next weekend, a pre-run. The 860-some miles, and then race week is uh, the week of the 14th contingency and uh, all the logistics. And then How is it structured? Is it structured like uh, like like the Olympics, like 400-meter uh, relay? Like you, each team member does a leg, and then whatever the time is? Yeah, great question. So there's like uh, probably a good 10-plus bike classes. I can't even keep up with them. Open Pro, you can have up to four or five riders. Uh, I'm an Ironman, so I got to do the whole race myself. Sometimes it's 15, 18 hours. Uh, the Baja 1000, two years ago when it was ran from Ensenada to La Paz, right outside of Cabo, that I did that in 31 hours, 48 minutes, nonstop, no sleep. I ate one sandwich. I had a wheel change when they changed my wheels at uh, race marker 720. Ate a sandwich, put my helmet back on. Condom catheter on. Hose I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, we just pee no. in the suit. We just no, you just put condom catheter on. They make them. You get them at a medical pl- supply store, and then a little hose attached to it. You run it down the inside of your leg, cut a hole in your race pants, and then duct tape the hose to the side of your boot, and then uh, just go. Is know? that a weird uh, sensation to be driving or riding the bike and peeing at the same time? It's going to be like weird the first time, yeah, right? Yeah, you look for flat spots where it's not super rough, <laughs> so you can kind of like, you know, tweak to where you can kind of, you know, uh, it's like peeing in the water, like peeing in right. the ocean, same thing. But uh, yeah, it's weird, but then you just get used to it, and then you just hope sometimes you know, it doesn't come off. If not, you're just peeing in your boots. Which yeah. has happened, clearly. It's happened several times. Wow. Yeah, that's miserable. That's it miserable, is. yeah. Because one boot will be soaked and the other one won't. <laughs> then your skin will start rubbing on the side of the boot and you're focused on that. And it's Yeah, it's bad. It's a bad day at that point. Yeah. It, are you ever frustrated with, like, your time? Or is it just... It, do you not worry about, like, your time and those things? I mean, I guess it's a race, so you must, but... Yeah, it's, it's a race for... Um, you're racing against your competitors. You're racing against the clock. And then you're racing against trophy trucks so we usually get a four-hour head start uh ahead of the trucks because it's safer so in my mind is to not only you know of course beat your competitors i know i'm going to finish within the allotted time unless i have a mechanical sometimes it's a 48 hour race 52 hour race um but my thing is is those trucks come up on you so fast so much horsepower it's scary They'll go by you. A lot of the guys are really courteous to motorcycle guys. They'll go by you. They won't get on a gas too hard. Sometimes they do, and they'll throw softball-sized boulders just, like, slinging by your head, and that's when it gets a little little nerve-wracking. So it's just like, get ahead of the trucks. Get ahead of the and trucks. And sometimes when you say sometimes they do, like, is it meant as, like, a fuck you motorcycle rider kind no, of thing? No, no, not at all. They're more like, uh, shit, we want to get first, too. Got it. So they, don't, they won't realize how far and how big some of the rocks that they throw back. Got it. So I kind of, you know. Because they've never gonna... ridden a mile in your shoes. Exactly. Yeah. Some guys have, but most of them haven't. Wow. And have you ever driven the trucks? No, doesn't no, not you. yet. Doesn't it doesn't it? Not close me. enough to death. No, yeah. it really is. It's safe. Some of those right. guys have air conditioning, heated enclosed. seats, enclosed roll cage. What's the fun in that? Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun. Nah, no, really you're gonna be out there with the elements. Exactly. Like fucking tortoises. Yep. Cactuses, you know, jumping out at you and donkeys in the middle of the road. So really? Oh, yeah. Are those Cattle. hard to avoid? Like, do they scatter when you no, come up? No, cows are dumb as shit. They'll just they sit just in the middle sit. of the trail, and you'll just go by it so damn fast, you'll realize, and then your heart will start pounding through your chest. You're like, oh, wow, if that thing would have moved another six inches, I would have been done right. for. Yeah, I've had some buddies uh, down there close to, you know, for a lot of friends get hurt, and some guys killed. Kurt Caselli back in 2013, mm. KTM rider, he, he, you know, hit some livestock. He's no longer with us, so... uh yeah, it's bad. It happens a lot. Because it's like hitting a, a brick wall at oh, that point, yeah. right? Yeah, 2,000 maybe, pound I mean, cow or right. whatever. It's not moving. What about like at night, like a, a tortoise, if, if he's just sitting? Oh, yeah, you'll it, just go. Hard you'll, to recognize, yeah, right? Yeah, you'll go by that thing so quick. Either. So you're just, you're, do you have night vision? Uh... No, you run clear goggles at night, and then they actually, the whenever you the sun sets, your team, you'll pull in, you'll figure out where logistically is the best spot to put on the race lights. And then they'll put on this giant um, HID set of race lights, and it lights up the course. And the whole key about the lights is is that the lights are brighter than what you can ride. So the lights are so bright, you can't ride faster than what the lights are catching because that's how legit the lights wow. are. So at that point, you actually have to tell yourself to slow down because all you're seeing 
is this. Right. So you no longer see in the mountains or not like you're sightseeing anyways while you're racing, but now these lights tunnel are just vision. in tunnel vision. They're just going straight forward. So now you're on the throttle even more, which gets even dangerous. And is your team like go ahead and kind of do some spotting for you? Kind of like, hey, there's four tortoises or there's a pack of something or none of that? <laughs> no, no, none of that. I got to do all my research and homework prior to race day, which that's why we get to pre-run it. Uh, race day, we have two chase vehicles. One will be on one side of the peninsula on the Sea of Cortez. The other one will stay on the Pacific because both vehicles can't catch me as I cross over the peninsula in time. And then I'll go 200 some miles to finally catch up to the next chase vehicle. They have satellite tracking and they're like, okay, he's moving. They're good. They're following me on Wi-Fi in the vehicles. Kind of know where I'm at the whole time. You're not using the Waze app out there. No, <laughs> no. Waze doesn't exist down in Mexico. Right. No, it doesn't yeah. exist. You don't have any of that. No. Well. Nope. And uh, what's the like funniest thing that's ever happened to you out there? What did anything come to mind? Like the or, or the what's the biggest oh shit scenario you've faced? Uh, oh shit scenario. Um, well, Baja 500 this year. Matter of fact, um, ran first place. Oh, I'm still kind of pissed off about it. Actually, I'm still really pissed off. Ran first place all day. 14 hours and some change. The last 30 miles into the finish line, I hit some barbed wire wrapped up around my rear wheel, threw me off, wrapped around my arm, ripped my gear, and uh, the bike wouldn't move, killed the bike. So I'm on the side of the trail for 45 minutes with snips, snipping the wires out, and there goes second and third, and there goes my competitors, and then I just limp and the bike in for third. And you're all tore up. Yeah. You don't yeah. seem to have, do you have scars? No, I wear a suit. It's called a compression suit. Okay. And it's got th th real thick padding on it, and then a jersey on top of that, and then it went through my jersey and then through the pressure suit and just on top of the skin. That looks like you've got a little battle scar there. Oh, uh, yeah. You're going to say that's like a cigar burn or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's no, not a cigar okay. burn. That is yeah. a, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a okay. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, yeah, you never know what uh, what the desert's gonna throw at you. Um, I was on the Algerian border uh, four years ago, and uh, your kilometer reading says 280 kilometers of a straight arrow. So that means that's a long ways. So you're pinning it, you're holding it wide open. Lake beds like glass, you have nothing to worry about. So I'm tucked in, I look, and I'm see these black spots across the the horizon there. I'm like, all right, whatever. Keep going, holding it. They're getting bigger. Keep going. And then I look, and as I'm getting closer, it's a pack of like 30 camels just like moving in slow motion across the desert. And I just cut right through the center of them because I didn't want to get off course because if I went off course, right. then all my mapping is going to be screwed up. And I'm like, wow, I'm a literally, long ways away from home. Literally cut through the center, like hoping like they get out of your yeah, way kind the, of thing. The, yeah, like, there was a, a probably a good 20 leading a pack and then some stragglers. And I'm like, if I hold it at this angle, this degree, and this speed, I know they're not going to pick up the pace all of a sudden because they're just almost as dumb as cows. So, <laughs> you know, you can cut through them relatively quick. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. Do you have any video footage of that, like from GoPro? Man, so, yeah, a lot of times your battery runs out. You wouldn't, oh. you, you, every time you get to the cool you shit. You the cool shit. The cool shit. The battery dies. Your memory card is full. Oh. Yeah, and there's so much stuff to keep up with. And next day, we have a dune stage. We're in the dunes, racing through the dunes. My dumb ass gets lost. Come over a dune. And, uh, I don't know, 40-degree angle coming straight down the dune. And it's littered with black canvas tents of nomadic people. And I'm like, oh shit, I can't stop. I rip right right through this tent of nomads and they're coming out and they have their, <laughs> their turbans on. They're like, hey, what are you doing? Goats and shit everywhere. And I'm like, sorry. And just kept on getting it. Out in the middle of nowhere, you're like, how are people living out here? Right. They have nothing. Camels and goats in these black canvas tents. They just pick up and move them. That's, that's so crazy. That's nuts. Do you have something that's monitoring your heart rate the entire time? No. See, we have to get all of our EKG, our echocardiograms, everything has to be done prior to the race. All your blood tests, everything needs to make sure that you're fit fit to race. Is it ever relaxing out there? Like, is it? Is there a moment where it's like, oh, this is fun? Or is it, I feel like your heart's just the whole jacked time. and you're yeah. just like, yeah, fuck, right? There's and, it, and there's a lot of this, right? It's a not lot smooth. of that. A lot there's of a lot that. Of, uh, yeah. uh, like yeah. that? Yeah. Every, a couple of people are like, Mike, how does your body feel at the end of 31 hours of racing? What's hurt? And I'm like, well, the follicles on the back of your ears start to hurt. So your entire body hurts. But what bothers me the most is my eyes because you're so focused Right. You know, on a train, but then your eyes start to vibrate because right. for literally hours and hours and hours, you're just focused on not crashing, yeah. not dying, the hazards coming up behind you, you know, everything you can imagine. I, not to compare this in any way to what you do, but just like to, like, 
those of you listening, the six of you that uh, <laughs> are like, what is this like? When I played baseball, I played shortstop. Once in a blue moon, I had to play the outfield. And whenever the ball is hit and you're running, I don't think people realize when you're trying to track something right. in the air yeah. and you're running and it's like your level's constantly changing, it's yeah. fucking brutal. Yeah. So like, yeah. I can't even imagine going 100 miles per hour yeah. and on that desert terrain yeah. and you're looking for animals and fucking rocks and crazy yeah. shit. Yep. It's, gotta it's, be... it's a mind fuck, and, and it's like everything in Baja, especially other, in comparison to other deserts I've raced, everything down there is designed to kill you. You know, whether it be hazards, livestock, spectators, because that's essentially that's their Olympics. You'll be out in the middle of nowhere for hours on end, racing to pitch black. You're thinking you're by yourself. You're cold. You're miserable. Come over a hill, and there's thousands of people. Fires, families, people drinking, partying, cheering you on. You're like, all right, another spike of adrenaline. Let's go. You know, so, yeah, it, there's all kinds of stuff. Are you ever going so fast that you're like, fuck, I need to slow down, but yeah. the, the, the don't be a pussy voice in the back <laughs> of your head says, don't you dare take your hand off the throttle, and you all just... All the time. All the time. And your own... We are our own worst enemy. So us inside of our heads, imagine having a helmet on with earplugs to where it blocks all the ambient sound out, even the motor. I've cut some earplugs. You're fighting your own brain and your own thoughts. For hours and hours and hours. Wow. So I constantly have to reel myself back in. Mike, you're going a little too fast. You need to keep it moving. You have another 18 hours, 12 hours of racing. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home and see wherever the cards fall uh, because you don't want to go so fast to where you throw it away. So there's right. a lot of lot of mind, a lot of mind yeah. strategy, you know, going on with that. You know? Have you ever, any of the times you did wreck, not to dwell on this part, right. but, you know, we like to hear about the carnage. Yeah, right? We want to hear about does. the carnage, yeah. Mike. Uh, were there times where you're like, Deep down, you're like, fuck, I need to slow down. But you're like, no, I'm not going to. And then wipe out. And you're like, fuck. Yeah, um, not so much in those points. More of the spots to where it's just like, all right, we're good. We're good. Just kind of get through this. Wham, upside down in a rock bed. Just never even seen it coming. You know, no, I'm not going to say smooth. Just, you know, cruising through the rocks. And the next thing you know, you're upside down. It's like. And the bike isn't always toast when you crash, right? No, no. So they, they, they can do, hold up pretty do, well. And you, then the, the rebuilt. So we get a brand new bike from Husqvarna, strip it down to the frame. We keep the frame, swing arm, and motor. Everything else is aftermarket, overbuilt, you know, built for this, uh, you know, the desert and extreme riding and stuff. It's just not off the off the showroom floor, and then you take it out in the desert because it wasn't it. special rims, hubs, spokes. Everything's got to be overbuilt in order to make it to the end of these races because they're just that brutal. And when you are racing, uh, how many bikes are near you? Like, is is it is there like three bikes right around you? Is it a whole pack of you? No, it's a... Uh, you get it, separated quick, right? You get separated quick, and at the start, because it's um, it, a lot of the trails, two-track trail, then it opens up. They start a, ra a rider every 30 seconds. So they start each class, you know, open pro, pro 30, over 30. All these classes start before you, and it's every bike 30 seconds. And then you start passing the slower guys, and then you start picking people off. And then you're in the dust for hours on end, not being able to see anything, or the moisture off the Pacific Ocean. You're trying to wipe your goggles off. So there's a mm. lot of moving parts to it, man. And do you ever get passed by people? And if you do, are you like, fuck? Well, it's yeah, yeah. Especially, I I always get passed by the quads. Those guys are fast, and they start those behind us. I pass a bunch of the other classes, but they always start the Ironman as one of the last group because they think that we're not fast or not going to pass anybody. But a lot of us wind up beating and passing all the other classes. You love that, so I love that, and that's a great feeling. I'm beating guys that have a three or five man team. And I'm getting to the finish line before them, and I'm doing it all by myself. That's what's rewarding to me. Are you guys considered like the if you were going to compare it to like fighters? Are you considered the heavyweights because you're on the yeah. mo like you're the like the most respected yeah, like most respected, oh, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then in uh, in Espanol, uh, Viking is Vikingo. So I'm hauling ass down the course, middle of nowhere, and my beard sticks out of my helmet. All I hear is Vikingo, Vikingo, Vikingo. So it, it's kind of it's kind of it's a good feeling when I hear all the locals cheering me. Did someone else coin a uh, Viking mic and it stuck, or did you did you was this self? No, uh, not me at all. Not me at all. Somebody else stuck it years and years ago. I don't know who it was. I don't know who could take the credit for it. But uh, yeah, it's stuck. And yeah, it's been there ever since. 
And what about your home life? Married? Kids? What's your deal? No, no, no kids. Got no a... one's going to put up with this craziness, Yeah, exactly. Mike. Yeah. That, yeah, every girlfriend I had is like, well, it's... wait, you just got back, <laughs> and you're, now you're leaving it next week? I'm like, yeah, this is what I do. Right. I'm always doing something. So. It's probably worse uh, for women like than you being like a cop, just in terms of, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, like, they're like, wait, you're riding to the desert with fucking camels? Like, right. what are you doing? Yeah. Like, so, wait, yeah, I'm confused. You're going to go hang out in Dubai for a week, and then you're flying over to Qatar to race. Well, when am I going to see you? I'm like, I don't know, because I think I'm going to go to uh, Jordan after that and hike and uh, do some exploring in the the treasury, which that was epic. That was so epic. But uh, yeah, no, I got a current girlfriend now, and uh, we're pretty solid. And she's a flight attendant, so that's what I think. That's why it works. She stays she, out of your hair. Yeah, she's she, out. In she's fucking, gone. Yeah, right. We meet up when we meet up. So. And are you able to do like what we would call normal shit? Like, can you do dinner in a movie, or is it just too fucking boring? For no, you? no, hundred percent. I'm big into concerts, music, metal music. So I love festivals. Yeah, dinner. Yeah, movie. But to do that consistently, weekly, and just that be the grind. No, you got to no get way. out. I got. I gotta get out, man. Right. I gotta, I gotta see what's around the corner. I always have this one. Check it out. What's next? What's next? I got a lot, list of things. But that... you're capable of Saturday oh, night, yeah. date night, dinner, movie, yeah. Netflix, yeah. and chill type oh, yeah. of shit. Yeah, I can All do right. that for about a solid two weeks, and then I gotta go okay. somewhere. All yeah. right. And yeah. then you got to get out. Yeah. So when's the last time you were on a bike? Every day? Um, No, not every day. Sometimes uh, I'll change it up. I'll hit the gym really hard. And then next week I'll ride two or three days. So I was, I was riding, uh, what's say Thursday. I just got back from Idaho. Uh, I was riding last Thursday. And do you get mm-hmm. sore from riding? No, not at all. You don't? No, are not at all. Are you sitting on the bike? Is your mm-hmm. ass planted or you're up? Some guys sit. I stand. It's safer for me to stand because I'm just used to standing. For like and, 30 hours. And just let the bike, yeah. Non, the that's minute you so sit, insane. that's when you hit a rock and then sends you over the handlebar. So I'm just like, you know what? Oh. Uh, I'm just going to stand the whole time. So some guys are, are can do sitting, but I, a lot of us stand. So I'm standing the whole time. And when you're going 100, there's no braking there's, you can't brake, right? It's no. a slow, uh, it's just off the throttle. Yeah, and then, the brake, and then right? you're using transmission to try and slow you down if you see a oh shit hazard, like oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Right. You're, you're trying to do everything you brake, can. Because the brake, you're flying, yeah, right? Yeah, and if you hit the rear, all you need is slide. So uh, you're trying to use some of the transmission and you know, the front brake. But yeah, it, it's, it's intense, man. It's Scary intense. and... Or no. Uh, it's not the right word yeah, for you. No, not, not scary. Um... Alive. I mean, you know, right. you get that. You get that a different feeling, man. It's a. There's nothing that can that can you know give you that same adrenaline and everything else. It makes you feel alive. Was skydiving or is skydiving scary for you or no, walking the park? No, I did that. Boring I mean, almost. Yeah, after you do it a couple of times, <laughs> it's like, all right. Well, no, check this out. So I actually wanted to be an instructor at one point, and then I started doing some research this and the other, and then I read the statistics in comparison to off-road motorcycle riding. And it is unbelievably safe. How safe skydiving is in comparison to off-road motorcycle ride. I'm like, well, that's probably why I'm a little. Sounds bit pretty crazy. Right yeah. <laughs> I uh, I made a bet when Conor McGregor fought Khabib. I was convinced Conor McGregor was going to beat Khabib, mm-hmm. and so I made a bet that. Well, first of all, prior to that, when Conor fought Floyd. I made a bet that Connor would beat Floyd, which obviously that didn't happen. And the bet was I made it with, a, with my buddies over at MMA Junkie uh, Radio. I had to walk around Mandalay Bay for 30 minutes wearing nothing but a diaper uh, and holding up a sign saying, I bet on Connor McGregor. It was, it was terrible. It was very embarrassing. It was awful. <laughs> I was actually on, out on the Vegas Strip in a okay. diaper in the hot summer. It was terrible. Right. So on the next time when he fought, and I bet he would beat Khabib, um, a uh, buddy of Jake Ellenberger's who was like special forces uh, and he's a like skydiving instructor now. Yeah. I don't think he's still active military. He might be. I'm not positive. But uh, the bet was I would go skydiving because I've always said I'll never jump out of a fucking airplane. Like this is not going to happen. I won't bungee jump. Like, you I'm need not, to. I'm not afraid of heights, but th- there's just I, I, uh, jumping out you of You need a... to. It's a great feeling. Fuck. It's a great feeling. And yeah. it, 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 I take some time off before I do the next one. And every time, if you don't do it like once a week or twice a week, it, it, that feeling comes back of doing it the first time. And it's amazing feeling. I'm so afraid, really. You like I've, so far, I've been welching. I've welched on the bet, and I don't yeah. want to, but I kind of want to. You like, gotta uh, do really? It. You gotta do it, man. It's gonna be a game changer for you. I'm telling mm. you. And then, if you want, if you want uh, some Mormon fuzzies, pull up the stats on it, and then you'll see how safe it is. It's not about shoots not opening up. It's usually you know somebody was doing stupid on the landing and break a leg. 
You but know. once in a while, that little bucket yeah, of doesn't course, open. Of I feel course. like I might be the once in a while. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but you got to venture outside that box. I you know, can't but look if at you it like saw that. my girlfriend, you'd be like, don't jump out of a plane just in case, dude. Like, I won the war. Like, oh, there's no reason gotcha. maybe leaping out of a plane. Right, what if? Right, what if? Yeah, there's always going to be that what if. You don't worry about what if. I don't. I don't Fuck live my life if. like that. You, you know? are the other man. guy. What it could have, should have. I'm not going to do it, man. I just do it. Try to do it? I just do it. Just leap out of the I'm telling you. Mm. Then you'll be calling me up, bro. Thank you so much for recommending it. Thanks for pushing me in that direction. Really? I'm telling you. Do you feel the speed that you're falling? No, you're... you don't feel the speed. You feel the uh, the euphoric feeling. Like the first time I jumped, I was in Virginia and jumped through. We were free falling through the clouds, and you feel the moisture, and you're just like, you just feel this euphoric feeling. And then you pierce through the clouds, and you see the ground. And that's you're like, wow, this is this is a good time. I want to do this again. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you land, you're high fiving your buddies. I Let's don't know if beer. you're the right guy to be asking this. No, though. I'm like, not. You're, you're I'm not. like you're <laughs> fucking lunatic. Yeah, like, I'm not. I'm not the right yeah, guy. Yeah, you're the wrong guy to be advising me yeah, right now. I don't yeah. know if I should li- you'd say everything's a good idea. Uh, yeah. 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 Deal with the consequences later. Right. Yeah. If I told you I want to try riding through the desert fucking hundred miles per hour, you'd be like, Yeah. Yeah, I'll take you with me, and I'll put the GoPro Fuck on my that. helmet and get some cool no footage. No chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I can do it. You need to. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Definitely. How, how 100%. Many times have you when you see it? old ladies jumping out of a plane, it's like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. They're doing, they're celebrating their 87th birthday. But I look at like, that as like, what's the worst that's going to happen for them? <laughs> <laughs> right? They've lived a long life. They've had a good run. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Actually, what you don't realize is they're hoping this is the, the they become the uh, statistic. Right. You know? Right. They're like, right. yeah. yeah. Little Johnny gets his inheritance now. I know. I don't I know. know. Well, I, it's funny because I always kind of reference back to, uh, not to get dark, but September 11th was on a Tuesday September 12th, my best friend was on his motorcycle on the street with his girlfriend on the back, and an old lady pulled out in front of him, no. and uh, he died the day after September 11th. He died at 20 years old. I was 22 at the time, and it's every day I'm doing something cool or fun or racing, I think about how dangerous it is and how I can die, but I think about my friend Adam. It's like he didn't get to live X amount more years mm. than than me doing everything that I've done from the day he's died, and it's like... Adam would want me doing everything I can possible because he's not there to appreciate or take any of that in. I just, I kind of reference that back all the time, you know? And then I had another buddy who died at Pikes Peak, Carlin Dunn, competitor. We uh, battled it out back in 2016 when the movie was made from Dust to Glory about racing in Baja. And he just died in Pikes Peak last month, setting records on his Ducati, uh, racing to the top Pikes Peak, which they've been doing that since the day of time. But it's like, he's not going to stop, you know? And right. it's like, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I just don't want to be at a point in my life looking back going, damn, I wish I would have done this. And so you, done that. you look at it like if something tragic was to happen while you were out there, that's, 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 that's your life. That's, that's it. how you, that's it. That's yeah. That's the way it was meant to be. That's the way it was planned out. And, uh, yeah, no regrets. no regrets. What about rock climbing? Have you done any of that? Have you seen this? The, the one guy just died recently, right? The the I forgot his name. Um, but he climbs with like no no gear. Yeah, nothing. No, I watched those guys. I was up in Yosemite uh, l- last month, and I'm at the bottom of El Capitan, and I'm just yep. sitting there eating breakfast, watching these guys, and you can see these little orange dots, which are their tents. They slept there overnight, and then they climb up some more, and they have nothing with them, and they're just free climbing. I'm like. That's pretty you dr- awesome. You draw the line on that one? Yeah, well, I don't have the body for that. I'm a little okay. guy. Those guys are usually skinny, lanky. Right. You know, real, I, can, you know, I, I don't have that physique to be That's my excuse climbing. for skydiving. Oh, I don't have right. the body for skydiving, <laughs> Viking Mike. I nah, don't have the body nah, for it. No, you're not getting away with no, that one. No, no nah, good. That doesn't work. Doctor said I get a... No. No. no nothing. Nothing. Fuck. No, nothing. I'm not aerodynamic. No. Nah, none nothing. of that works. Uh, none of that works. Uh, I tried. No. Uh, I don't think you can come up with anything to get out of that. Mm. No, you really can't. But you wouldn't. You've never tried climbing. <laughs> no, never have. Um, so I found something. Some, yeah, I found something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could do the jumping out of the airplane. I've done bungee jumping. What's uh, uh, worse, bungee jump? Nothing of it's bad to you because compared to the motorcycle. Yeah. No. What was cool though? I jumped off the stratosphere five times, and every time I've done it, it was at night. And run, you, they, they open up the doors, and they you're on that little blue platform, and you're seeing the people in the restaurant eating dinner, and they're like, "Okay, now let go." <laughs> 
And your brain's like, well, wait, you could see the cars moving. So that was a little bit harder to do versus skydiving. Really? You're up so high, you're just like, whatever. Right. But stand on the edge of a building and then, you know, you kind of just let go of these rails. They tell you to go. Uh, that gives you a little bit more of a, a mind fuck, you know? Just yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think people realize how high up, like even just 20 feet, like if you ever like been up on the diving board yeah just to see what it is and look down like yeah. 20 feet or whatever it is like it's it's far when you're yeah. up there yeah it's like real it, far when we were kids we used to jump off these uh retired uh military uh radar towers out in the middle of the chesapeake bay in the atlantic ocean and we were i don't know 100 some feet 100 feet plus just kids in high school jumping off these things you know rocks underneath of them metal and we were just like we didn't give a shit we just go for it you know so you were always that oh, kid yeah. you were always wired like yeah. that. Yeah, all the time. Like my buddy Jake Ellenberger, who used to do the show, uh, he's got a son. His oldest son is only like maybe four or five years old right now. Yeah. Um, he's already a daredevil. Like you can see it. He, every right. single day this kid climbs up on top of Jake's SUV. And every day on Instagram, he you see him walking through his garage and you see the kid on top. And he's like, what are you doing? And the kid's like, I'm up here. <laughs> like, right. like, you can already tell. Like, he's yeah. just fearless. He's yeah. just the fearless gene is in you when you're yeah. young. Never went away. You know, some people outgrow it. And it's right. Just, it's never went away for me. So you've always been like daredevil. You'll do yeah, anything. You're the always. guy that'll jump off the roof into the pool. You're, oh, you're yeah. that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy. Minus the eating the stuff. That's kind of weird. You know, eating weird food. Weird. Right. You know, I'm not putting cow nuts in my mouth right. and shit like that. None of the fear factor None shit. None of the fear factor shit. Yeah, I'm I mean, good on that. Right. I'm good on that. No but, reason to eat a bowl of maggots no. just to prove something. No reason to yeah. at all. But you'll jump into... Yeah, jump into uh, the deep end of anything, you know. Scuba diving? Yeah, done it several times. It was fun. Yeah, some wrecks. Yeah. Hang gliding? Hang glide. Haven't done that one yet, but I want to do it in Brazil where you fly off the rock and uh, you land on a beach in Copacabana. You land right on the beach hang gliding. Okay. That's kind of cool. What about the, the is it called the wingsuit? Yeah, haven't done the wingsuit. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah. I would think that's right up your alley. It is. I think once I make the transition of getting off the bike. If you're scared, just no, say you're scared. not at all. Then I'll jump into a, another, another yeah. outlet. When it's know. time to hang up the, yeah. the bike. Hang up the bike, then jump I'll do in a something wingsuit. safer. Wingsuit right. safer. Is it? <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. I didn't look at those stats, but that one guy, I forget his name. He died about a year ago. I always flew I've with his dog. I've seen the video, right? Yeah, you've seen the video. Yeah, I real, think I've seen the video. He's world famous. Right. Yeah, he was legit. I always put his dog on his back. And right. Did his thing, but yeah. Uh, he he was he did some amazing jumps. Are there women that do this? Um, it's becoming very popular. Women are trying to get into it. There's a couple of women that try to do Ironman. Some of them su- succeed, and uh, they're really pushing each other. Women's groups of you know you know beefing each other up. How do we do it? Let's go, let's go. And uh, yeah, I, I've supported a couple girls that reached out to me on Instagram. And Mike, how do I train for this? Which I do. I'm like, I'll be more than happy to share with you all my secrets or whatever I can do to help you out. And do you have like uh, is I would assume like a lot of the guys that do it are like either ex-military or ex-cops or like things of that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, athletes, a lot of ex-military, a lot of uh, um, not your norm, you know, football player type thing because right. this type of. Uh, of racing and endurance training, you know, David Coggins, if he, you know, if I taught him how to ride, that guy would be out there in the bar 1000 right. doing it without a doubt. He's going to be like, Mike, I'm going to get to the finish line. I don't give a shit. They time me out or not. Right. I'm getting to the finish line. So he'd be all about it. And do you have like, do, is there like the, uh, he's a ninth grade math teacher. Or never. He's a, never. <laughs> never. No. It, you're either, you know, ex-military, ex-cop, firefighter, or, okay. or somebody that's just not wrapped too tight. Got you know? it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Like recovering, a lot of them like recovering from like drug addiction or things like that. No, some of the guys, no, no, uh, uh-uh. because the amount of training that you have to do and the self discipline and the, Got it. you know uh, the food and everything, you're it's it's quite the undergoing. Because there is a lot of training that just goes in. You, you don't just jump out there on a bike and just wing it. No, there's guys that have gone out there that have done it that had the financing to finance themselves to say, okay, I'm a, you know this is the the hardest off road racing in the world. Uh, quote Red Bull is in Baja, and there's a lot of guys with deep t- pockets. Says I'm going to go out there. I can ride dirt bike. I'm going to go out there and race in 1000 and not even get close to the finish line. And they've had all the support, all the logistics, finances, bikes built, everything, and just never made it. And how many races a year do you do? Um, in the Score International Series, there's four. 
Four doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking one race, 350 miles, you have to go down there pre-run, do your homework, pre-run the 350 miles. That's just one race. Next race, 500 miles. When you say pre-run, does that mean you run, you do the, the whole, whole race? Course. Okay. Yeah, usually like two to three weeks before race week. And then when you go back down for race week, you do the sections that had the most hazards that you'd think in your when you did your homework. And then so, so by the end of the season, you're doing over 5,000 miles of riding and racing down in wow. Baja. So it is substantial. Okay, and then and the next race is coming up, November. Yeah, Baja 1000. That's a big one. Is that, that's the, a big is one. that the biggest? That's the creme de la creme. That's, that's the, the one. Yeah, Are we going to win fun. this thing? We're going to try. We just won the Baja 400, got first place, so we're going to go for the uh, 1000. Uh, I'm currently in first place in the point series, so hopefully I'll win the championship again. I won it in 2016, so I'm going for it again this year. So. All right, well, this was fun, man. Do me yeah. a favor. Will you come back afterwards and oh, give us a, yeah. a, a, a recap of what happened? 100%. percent i love to. Can we have the GoPro? Yeah. Pro on this time? Are you allowed um, to go pro? Actually, we're having the whole film crew down, so we'll have okay. a film crew in one vehicle, one in the other, and we've done some filming and some uh, documentaries down before, so we're going to do another whole production. So, And this time, it's not going to be just about me. It's going to be about the team and our antics and our family as we go out to dinner. We do all this you know, crazy, wild, fun shit, so uh, hopefully we're going to pitch it as a pilot. Some people are interested in it. Uh, I just did a pilot with a group of people from Comedy Central out in the desert with uh, my buddy owns an art gallery in uh, the Venetian. So I helped him fill the pilot out there. And I was like, well, we're going to film in Baja. And he's like, give me the footage. Once you guys get it all together, let me send this out off to some people and see what they think. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. I mean, life's weird like that. Yeah. You, just, you take darts and you throw them out there and right. see where they stick. That's right. a, you, you set a plan. I want to do this. I want to do this. Plan goes to shit. You know, you just follow what's working. Yeah. That's the way you have to kind of live life. You know? Yeah. That's the way I live. It works for me. Very cool, man. Well, look, I'm putting together a short list of of nominees for the Action Junkies Hall of Fame. You're officially going to be on the first ballot ever for Action Junkies Hall of Fame. You're probably in the lead right now. I'm trying to think of who else is on there. Just a couple other guests. Okay. But uh, this is really a fun conversation. Yeah, thank thanks you. for coming by today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate right, thanks, it. Thanks, man. <laughs> we'll see you next week. That's good shit. Podcast.